What's going on in the city of Malmö, Sweden? Very different things, depending on who you ask. This is a story of bombs and unicorns. Today, I attempt to bring you an overview of the good, the bad and the ugly when it comes to my own hometown. I'm Henrik Jönsson, an independent libertarian entrepreneur. If you appreciate my videos, I'm thankful if you choose to make a contribution using one of the payment options to the left. Without your continued support, this Swedish libertarian channel would not be possible. Also, do not forget to hit the subscribe button down below if you've not already done so, and remember to click the bell icon so you get notified when I publish new material, which I do with great commitment every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. Central European time. Today, I'm talking about Malmö, malice, and misunderstanding. Stay tuned. Monday 10th of June 2019 was not a good day for Malmö. The central station was cordoned off by police and the National Bomb Squad was deployed in a situation where a suspected terrorist ended up being shot three times to prevent a possible bomb from going off during rush hour traffic. All train traffic in and out of Malmö was suspended during this emergency, but in the end it turned out to be a false alarm. However, during the lockdown, reports of deadly fire in residential area of Bellevue-Gordon was reported and the police later confirmed that a 20-year-old man had been shot dead. A few hours later, two young men reported having been fired at in the residential area of Lawrence Boy. The police confirmed finding use ammunition rounds in the area. Later the same night, the National Bomb Squad is deployed for a second time as another bomb has detonated in the residential area of Rosengård, destroying the lobby and facade of a tower block building. An hour later, another bomb detonates in a restaurant, this time at Adelgata, central Malmö. Police and rescue services arrive at the scene at a quarter past three in the morning. These violent incidents, albeit unusually clustered, are nothing new to Malmö, which has an increasingly worrisome track records of shootings and bomb explosions. But what does it mean? And how do the Swedes deal with situations like these? The Swedish establishment will generally not take kindly to individual citizens commenting on issues like these at all, especially when speaking to a foreign audience. It is considered to be in poor taste to air Sweden's dirty laundry in public with the overbearing fear that it might damage the image of Sweden. In fact, the sitting centre-left government has been pushing for a new constitutional media law, currently known as Proposition 201770, which, among other things, will provide legislative tools for taking action against citizens or entities representing Sweden in ways deemed to hurt national interests. Or whatever that eventually is going to mean. Let me firmly establish that I have no ambition to either hurt nor misrepresent Sweden with this video. I rather aspire to present a fair and balanced view of certain national characteristics of Sweden in the face of adversity. Secondly, and more importantly, I wish to extend my deepest gratitude to the brave men and women of the Swedish police force for diligently working to manage situations of increasing complexity and physical danger. Largely, the Swedes manifest two extremely polarized stances when confronted with violent threats. One, the defensive propagandist reaction. Let's call this group the unicorns. This group will argue intensely that Sweden is better, safer and more successful than ever before. Sverige har aldrig varit tryggare än vad det är nu. They will also insinuate with passive-aggressive fervor that anyone who does not understand this is either misguided, emotionally controlled alarmist or an immoral, suspicious populist with a covert, anti-democratic agenda. Group 2. The aggressive, mocking reaction. Let's call this group Dr. Doom. This group will argue with equal intensity that Sweden is lost in a state of acute collapse and deterioration. They will also insinuate that anyone who does not understand this is a lying, misguided and treacherous servant of a corrupt elite bent on destroying the country for personal gain. 
Both of these reactions were exemplified when American parachute journalist Tim Poole came to visit Sweden in the beginning of 2017. Initially, it was perceived that Poole had come to debunk the now infamous Donald Trump last night in Sweden remark. You look at what's happening last night in Sweden. Sweden! This rendered him great popularity with the unicorns while being dismissed as a politically correct stooge by Dr. Doom. As Poole started raising problematic Swedish issues on his YouTube channel, he immediately fell out of favor with the unicorns, who quickly rebranded him as a dangerous populist instead. Instead, he came into favor with Dr. Doom, who now celebrated him as an agent of truth. Both these reactions are problematic, and available numbers on Sweden's actual crime situation harbor somewhere in between both of these two extreme positions. National figures from Brå, the Swedish authority for research on criminology and statistics, show that gun crime is rising slowly, but not at an alarming rate considering the population growth. Homicide and murder rates are relatively stable if viewed over a 20-year period, but they do show a steep spike between 2012 and today. This is the way Dr. Doom frames the statistics. However, viewed with an extremely short time horizon, rates have dropped somewhat between 2017 and 2018. This is the way the unicorns frames the statistics. Reported crime levels are down in all of Sweden's major three cities, but it needs to be remembered that the inclination to report crime drops as people deem it pointless, as the police will not investigate most reported crimes due to insufficient resources. It is also important to note that the majority of crime reduction in Sweden is due to falling levels of domestic homicides related to alcohol, and do not reflect a decrease in public armed crime or bomb attacks. Further, enthusiastic unicorn reports of fewer reported shootings in 2019 as compared with 2018 also failed to mention that, even so, more people have been shot to death this year, which basically just tells us that the criminals have become more efficient at killing people. To hold this forth as an indication of things being on the right track in Malmö tells more of how desperate the proponents of the unicorn worldview are becoming. Both the unicorns and Dr. Doom are bending the spoon to suit their respective worldviews, while the actual underlying data is incomplete and hard to draw any firm conclusions from. There is no spoon. So why are both of these groups so determined to loudly communicate their own interpretation of a clearly very complex situation? The unicorns tend to be urban academics with jobs in the media or within the political framework. This group view themselves as the defenders of democracy against the forces of authoritarian xenophobic totalitarianism and are therefore vehemently defending migration at all costs. Dr. Doom is rural, working class and a business owner. This group view themselves as realists, defending the Swedish nation and welfare system against multiculturalism and financial depletion by foreigners with costly benefits. Both of these groups have valid points. It is important for Sweden to stand up against totalitarianism. And at the same time, it is important for Sweden not to take on a larger social and financial burden for asylum seekers than what the country actually can cope with. So let's look at the numbers of Malmö. Shootings and bomb explosions are reported so frequently that the local newspaper, Sydsvenskan, now carries its own section dedicated just to shootings and explosions. During 2018, Sweden suffered a total of 188 bomb attacks. That is more than one bomb attack every other day. From the start of this year until last week, Sweden has averaged 19 bomb attacks per month, up from 17 during 2018. The detonations are also increasing in power and cause more damage as they become stronger. What is causing these serious problems in Sweden right now? When in doubt, always follow the money. Show me the, money! the bottom line is a very harsh mistress indeed. And in this regard, it looks like Sweden has bitten off more than it can chew. 
An ever-increasing number of municipalities are reporting severe deficits, chiefly as a result of the government's two-year financial support for newly arrived migrants, which is now ending. This puts strain on everything from healthcare and schools to the housing market, at a time when police is underfunded and struggling with new forms of organized crime. It needs to be noted that these are two separate problems. Migration is not the direct cause for the rise in organized crime, but they are connected financially and socially. Benefits paid out to migrants account for a growing part of the budget in most municipalities at a time when this money is desperately needed elsewhere. Further, the escalating financial and social segregation that is the result of many low-skilled migrants failing to enter Sweden's highly complex and regulated labor market breeds discontent among the young, who instead become a recruitment base for the growing criminal gangs. At the same time, middle-class taxpayers leave crime-ridden areas in droves, leading to white flight and brain drain in Malmö with the tax base eroding further as fewer and fewer are paying for more and more people without an income. This information is not popular with the unicorn group who will maintain that it constitutes populistic alarmism to imply that Sweden has several serious problems. And if there is a problem, that problem is that Sweden's taxes are not high enough, even though they're the highest in the world if you count employer fees and consumption taxes. It needs to be noted that the Unicorn Group also largely are the most outspoken supporters of climate activist prodigy Greta Thunberg, who touts her own brand of doomsday alarmism by encouraging panic. Turns out the problem is not so much alarmism itself, but it's rather who is sounding the alarm. Unless Sweden manages to address these issues by reducing the cost of unfinanced asylum seeking benefits, reforming the police and forcing more people to provide for themselves, the unicorns run the risk of eventually making Dr. Doom right by sticking their heads in the sand about crime, labor market segregation and overstretched municipal budgets. Because time is running out fast for Malmö, specifically and for Sweden in general. Do you think a fair and balanced view is preferable to both utopian and dystopian worldviews? Share this video and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Do you have experience of crime in Sweden? Please share your views in the comment section down below. I welcome all respectful commentary. My name is Henrik Jönsson and I am neither a unicorn nor Dr. Doom, but I acknowledge that Sweden recently has created a slew of very serious problems for itself. Thank you very much for watching this video.